I have to tell you, I am. I, I have found this late. People have uh, told me about it, and I, I all of a sudden watched, binge watched the first season. The second season has just started, which I've already binge watched the entire second season. Both. Yeah, both seasons. It's so good. <laughs> and so congratulations, because you, you write every single one of these. It was your idea, the whole show, which is. Uh, and has anyone seen the OA? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> So it is, you know, before we get into it, explain what it is, if you can, to... Ooh, it's complicated. Yes, but it we is. can say in the short version, it's about um, a blind girl who goes missing, and she's found seven years later, and her sight has been restored, but she won't talk about how that happened or what happened over the seven missing years to the FBI or her parents, and then she opens up to this group of teenage boys and starts to tell them her story, and that is what happens over part one and part two. Right, yeah. and it's very uh, metaphysical. It's very, uh, have you always had this this vivid imagination of, because I think you you wrote two movies also with a, kind of the same, same vein. Yeah, I think, you know, my parents moved from Chicago to Florida when I was a kid, and I don't know if you've ever been to Central Florida. Yes, I've, I've toured there. Okay, so it's, you know, not a lot going on in the swamp part at the uh -huh, center. Uh -huh. So we were living there, and you know, basically everything there is designed to kill you. Gators, water moccasins, mosquitoes the size of pancakes. You know, it's a scary place. Um, and so I think it makes you develop an imagination. My parents sent me away to a summer camp there for a period. It was like a Girl Scout camp, literally in the Everglades. And the first day we got there, they told us, the only thing you need to know to survive this camp is how to run from a gator. Has anyone ever told you how to run from a gator? No, how do we, we should know that now. I'm gonna show you. No straight lines, all this. Yeah. And apparently this disorients and confuses them and that's how you survive. So when I got to this camp and they told me this, I was like, oh, my parents sent me here not to come back. <laughs> Like, the whole thing's a con. Uh -huh. I'm basically supposed to die here. Uh -huh. and, and so at night, you know, because I was so bored, I would start daydreaming these stories, and I'd be lying in the bunks with all the other little girls, you know, our covers pulled up and mosquito nets everywhere, because you can die from all the mosquitoes. And I would start telling them ghost stories. And there was this wood above, you know, in the cabin, and there was these kind of knots in the wood, like eyes. And so I was like, ah. Oh. We're on the ground of a great massacre, and all the ghost eyes are looking down on us. And I thought this was very entertaining for them. Mm -hmm. Five days later, they call me down to the front office, which is just a shack, you know, in the swamp. And they're like, S someone is coming for you. <laughs> and at first I'm like, Stephen King? You know, somebody yeah. exciting? Have I been nominated for this? <laughs> My mother, because all the girls had called and said that they were peeing their beds, they were so scared at night. <laughs> I got sent home from the camp. Well, you, that was probably a good thing. You probably wanted to leave. But that's actually a compliment, that your stories were so so great that you made up. Yeah. So so you um, you must have, it's very, what, what do your fans say to you when they come up to you? What are the questions that they ask you? Sometimes, this, this go around, people ask a lot about, have any, has anyone watched part two? <laughs> yeah, some people watched part two. So, there's a moment where the character communes with a 16-foot giant Pacific octopus. I was going to question that, the, too. It yeah. got out of the water and seemed to be OK, too. <laughs> yeah, so I was in the hardware store the other day getting a key made because anything that isn't attached to me, I lose. So I was in there for like the sixth or seventh time a new guy was making the key. And he's in his 60s and a big guy. I'm pretty gruff. Not necessarily who I thought would be an OA fan, but he makes the key, and then he turns around and hands it to me, and it's like, Old night man, I love how you're talking to that octopus. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, they, they say that the show is far out, but people dig far out. 